I want to talk to you today about the power of I am. What follows these two simple words will determine what kind of life you live. I am blessed, I am strong, I am healthy, or I am slow, I am unattractive, I am a terrible mother. The I am's that are coming out of your mouth will bring either success or failure. What kind of I am's are coming out of your mouth? I am victorious. I am blessed. I am talented. I am anointed. When you have the right I am's, you're inviting the goodness of God. Some of you, if you would just change the I am, you would go to a new level. Words have created power. With your words, you can bless your future or you can curse your future. I believe that how you start the day is how you end the day. And that if you want to get the most out of the day, you got to spend the first part of the morning to take care of you. You got to make yourself a priority. You got to do something every day, I believe, for your mind, your body, and your spirit. Get up in the morning and invite good things into your life. I am blessed. I am strong. I am talented. I am disciplined. I am focused. I am prosperous. I am strong. I am healthy. I am in shape. I weigh what I'm supposed to weigh. I am full of energy. I am passionate. I am talented. I am secure. I am valuable. I am confident. I have a good personality. People like me. I am fun to be around. I am happy. I enjoy my life. I am a person of excellence. I am full of integrity. I am successful. I am prosperous. My future is bright. This is a new morning. This is a new day. This is a new beginning. I expect that in this day, I will feel good all day long. Good within contrast because I understand it. Good with my deliberate attention of focus because I understand that better today than ever before because I'm consciously setting forth my intentions at the beginning of this day. Every day in your life, you got to weed the negatives. You got to fertilize the positive. Say thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for parents. Thank you for love. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for humility. Thank you for peace. Thank you for prosperity. Say thank you in advance for what is already yours. True desire in the heart for anything good is God's proof to you sent beforehand to indicate that it's yours already. You must prepare your mind to be happy. You need to live a life of happiness and fulfillment. See, I believe the greatest definition of success is happiness. When you get up in the morning, look in the mirror, instead of complaining, you should be saying, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am attractive. I am getting younger. It's up to you to choose what follows the I am. My encouragement is never say negative things about yourself. Most of us would never go up to another person, at least to their face, and criticize them. Yet we have no problem criticizing ourselves. I am so slow. I am so unattractive. I am so undisciplined. That is cursing your future. Do yourself a favor and zip that up. We have enough in life against us already. Don't be against yourself. What if, what if all my needs were met? What would I be doing in my life? What if everything is really working together for my good? What if all the bad things that have happened in my life are leading me to activating some great potential in my, in my experience? Mm -hmm. Live your best life. Attack the world. Enjoy the journey. Starting now, from today forward, 
be changed and charge it. Go out and make it happen. Every day, get up and live, learn, love, and laugh. And go out and go for it. Seize your future. Seize your destiny. And live the life you deserve. You create your environment from within yourself. So it doesn't matter where you are. So in this instant, you're being a soulfully reminded that, that everything that you could want, hope for, and desire is within you. You are being reminded that there are gifts of divinity that are within you. You are being reminded that there are ideas planted within your own heart. You're being reminded that there's so much power within you. And you're no longer be going to become victimized by errant thought patterns that would have you thinking that there's something out there that determines your destiny. Whether it be biological imperatives or the society in which you live. No, as an endogenous spiritual being, you are going to determine your own destiny. These are heart sets and mindsets for you to discover that the answer is you to the question of more prosperity, more health, right relationships, abundance, expansion during times of contraction. The answer is you, not outside of you. The answer is you, not someone else. If money was no object, if you could wake up and do what you wanted to do, what would you do today? If it didn't matter what majors made the most money, if you didn't have to worry about the pile of bills sitting on your dorm room desk, if you didn't have to worry about the opinions of your friends and your parents, what would you be doing today? I woke up and I went to a job, just a job. A job that I no longer had a passion for. You see, if you don't have a passion for what you do, what's the purpose of waking up? If you wait on your alarm clocks to wake you up every day, what's the purpose? Would you get up? Every day should have a purpose and you should fuel it with your passion. A lot of you are probably facing a similar decision. Where do you go from here? Graduate college? What's the next step, right? sure you have certain opportunities, most, most opportunities that a lot of people don't have, but what direction do you go in? The choices you make today, tomorrow, they might affect you for the next year, five years, 10 years, or for the rest of your life. Your life comes down to your decisions, and if you change your decisions, you will change everything. At half of your day, you're basically kind of checked out and you're on autopilot. And when you're checked out and you're on autopilot, any behavior pattern that you repeat can take over. And guess what are behavior patterns that we repeat? Thinking patterns. So self-doubt, worry, procrastination, overthinking, analysis paralysis, fear. Those are all thinking patterns that are habits. One of the most important things that I want people to understand is that you're actually not a worrier. You have a habit of worrying big difference. Mm -hmm. You're not a procrastinator. You have a habit of procrastinating. Big difference. And when you understand that any behavior pattern, whether it is a thinking pattern, like you doubt yourself all the time, um, or you get trapped upstairs noodling everything and you can never get started, or whether it's a behavior pattern like you drink too much, or you snap at your kids, or you micromanage your team, Every one of those behavior patterns and thinking patterns can actually be interrupted and replaced. And you understand that you always have a choice to go from autopilot to decision maker. Everything in your life will change. You will be a different negotiator. You will be different in sales. You will be unstoppable in the gym because you will realize the amount of garbage that you put in the way of your hopes, of your dreams, of your potential, of your confidence, of your courage. Everything comes down to the decisions that you make. We all know what to do. None of us know how to make ourselves do it. Why is it so hard to do the little things that would improve my life? 
The cool thing about the world today, and you talk about this too, is that all the information that you need is right at your fingertips. Hell, all you need to do is watch the show right. and you will get the secrets to creating the life that you want and being able to make that pivot so that you can let your passion direct you into a business that really helps you create the life that you want. So the information is there, the guide guidance is there. But the thing that's so difficult for most of us is how when you're alone and you turn off this show, do you push through the excuses, the habits, the fears, and the, the actual physical constraints that you have in your life right now so that you can make the pivot? And, and you know, in the scheme of life, hitting the snooze button is not that big of a deal. But here's the thing about life. None of us wake up and say, today is the day I destroy my life. What we do is we kind of check out because it feels overwhelming or we check out because we're afraid, or we check out because we start listening to self-doubt, and then we make these teeny tiny decisions all day long, and we don't even realize it. A decision to not get up on time, a decision to not eat the right thing, a decision to snap at your kids, a decision to not speak in a meeting, a decision to not look for a job, a decision to not deal with your finances, a decision to not call your parents, like whatever it is. All day long, these tiny decisions that take you so far off track, and then you wake up like I did and, and you, you look at your life and you think, how the hell did I get here? And so I want everybody to understand that first of all, you can't control the things that trigger you and the fact that you're gonna feel afraid and you're gonna feel doubt and you're gonna feel uncertain, but you can always interrupt that feeling and take control in the moment and actually shift what you're thinking. You cannot control what triggers you and the fact that you may rise up with anger, you may rise up with self-doubt, you may have anxiety, fill your body, but you can always control what you think and how you behave. And we spend way too much time trying to focus on manipulating how we feel about things and not enough time practicing the skills of controlling your behavior and your thoughts. Because if you can control your behavior and your thoughts, the way you feel will be different. 100%. And a lot of us are sitting around waiting to feel ready, waiting to feel courageous, waiting to feel confident, waiting for the right time. And that's not ever coming. Ever. Ever. You're not going to change your life up here. You only change it through action. Everybody that you admire is doing the exact same thing. They actually listen to their inner wisdom. They have figured out how to tune out the critic up here and trust the instincts and you know I have this saying about confidence that I've only recently kind of stumbled into as I've been digging into more research around the science of confidence and the skill of confidence because a lot of people think that confidence is a personality trait it's not it's actually a skill that you build through action and a lot of people think confidence is a state of belief it can be but that's not where it begins and so I say that confidence is the willingness to try. That's all that it is. Knowing that you may succeed or survive, but you'll still try. And to me, all those people that we admire most, that's what they're doing. They have the ability to tune into those instincts that are true for them. Because the fact is, there's only one you. That's it. And you matter because there's only one you and there's only ever gonna be one you. And your instincts and your experiences and your inner wisdom is a gift to the world. And every time that you tune it out because of the habit of hesitating or the habit of self-doubt or the habit of worrying or the habit of overthinking, you are robbing the world of that gift that you have. As soon as you open up your eyes, understand that you enter into consciousness. It is at that moment that your creativity is at its most powerful. At that moment, you have an opportunity to steer your thoughts and your emotions in the direction that you want them to go. In other words, you can choose to seize the day or you could let the day seize you. If you can really accept the fact that every time you think a thought and every time you speak a word, you are literally painting your future, uh, making your dinner, uh, whatever you want to call it. You are creating. And you're creating your own life. 
Every morning you need to confess the word out loud. You quit talking about everything as it is and you begin to call things that be not as though they are. It's as though our thoughts go out into the universe and are accepted and brought back to us as experience. I think we could all agree that today, too many people wake up in the morning and as soon as they open up their eyes, the first thing they focus on is the grueling day that they had the day before. All the things that didn't turn out the way they wanted it to go. Then they start thinking about the grueling day that lies ahead of them, the traffic jam that they have to be into. And then they can't understand why, when they're going into work, their energy level is down here. And with what you're trying to accomplish, with the responsibility that you have, it has to be up here. One of the things that I found out and the mistake that I made in my life back in the day, I kept talking about the things that I didn't want. I don't want to be poor. I don't want this. I don't want that. Talking about and decreeing what you don't want doesn't bring to you what you want. And this is why many of us uh, are caught in these kinds of storms. Negative words bring about negative results. Positive words, healthy words, successful words, prosperous words will do exactly that. It will bring health, it will bring happiness, it will bring success, and it will bring prosperity. So what I'm asking you to do, as soon as you open up your eyes, before you take the covers off, before you plant your feet on the floor, is to think of something or someone that you are totally grateful for in your life. I don't care who it is, and I don't care what it is. Maybe it's the person lying next to you, maybe you're thinking of your children, the dog that's lying on the side of the bed, the cat that's laying on the other side of the bed, maybe you're listening to the birds outside the window in your house, maybe you're thinking of your home, maybe it's a particular goal that you achieved or someone that you helped a couple of days before. Just feel it with your heart and soul and keep building from there because gratitude is the most powerful connection you have to your higher self. You always want to start your day connected to your higher self. The reasons are obvious. When you're connected to this higher part of yourself, your life just flows throughout the entire day. When you're confronted with a challenge, that's all it is. You don't take it personally, it's just a challenge, it's a part of life. And you know there's something within you that can deal with it and meet it and overcome it and be blessed by it. I always say the universe loves gratitude. The more you're grateful for what the good is in your life, the more good you get to be grateful about. Now, here's the most important thing, that if you are able to concentrate your thoughts one hour daily, meditating, praying, and thinking about the person you intend to do, or, or uh, the person you intend to be or to become, the places you want to go, the things you want to accomplish, what you want to invent, create, the wealth you want to accumulate, the people with whom you want to network, the lives you will change, the legacy you will leave. You will literally create in your mind a clear picture of the inevitable, believe it or not. And this is going to fuel your daily activities as well as what comes out of your mouth. That you have the ability to tune your tuner to well-being. And if you will do it before you have anything else to think about, then the things that will show themselves to you today will be things of well-being. I love the feeling of clarity. I love the feeling of recognizing how Source feels about me. I like this feeling of well-being. I like this sense of security that I have. I like understanding that I'm an extension of source energy. I like the idea of source energy. I like the feeling of source energy. I like the concept of source energy. I like the concept of my inner being. I like my awareness of my inner being. I like the feeling of awareness. I enjoy the feeling of clarity. So things could happen that you wouldn't expect at all, but they will happen. If you think of doing your positive affirmations, it's like planting a seed in the ground. It's not necessarily true at the moment, but it is something you want to have be true. So you put the seed in, and you, you, you plant a seed and you expect it to grow. Learn how to find love within yourself. That is, for some reason, that's taboo in society. But if you don't love yourself 100%, you are unable to love anything else 100%.
That goes with everything. If you're in a r romantic relationship with a partner, you you can't give 100% love to that person. That relationship won't flourish if you don't have 100% love in yourself. So learning how to love yourself fully, and if you're not getting the success or whatever you think you're supposed to get from it, a lot, take a step back. Be like, why? Why don't I love myself? Why don't I feel love at night when I'm about to go to bed alone? Why don't I feel love? What's happening? Do I feel fear before I go to bed? What am I feeling? And just being really brutally in tune with yourself. Be like, oh, maybe, did my parents not love me fully? Do I want my parents' love? Like, why... Why do I feel this like emptiness? Why do I feel this hollowness? What can fill that hollowness that is not superficial? Is it allowing myself to realize that I am a part of everything in this universe and we are all connected and that is beautiful? And maybe I can go and meet some random person on the street and have an interaction that will really be substantial to my day. Or maybe I can give something back to someone that really feels amazing. It just... Like, and that's why meditating really helped me because it allowed me to remove my ego from my thoughts because I am not my thoughts. And it allowed me to really become super clear and centered with who I am and say, okay, I am at the core, I am this. And I was, of course I felt hollowness and emptiness and I felt creative st stuck in my creativity. We all go through that, but then realizing I am not that, I didn't, I'm not gonna feel that an hour from now. Why am I not going to feel that an hour from now? Because I see the sadness and I'm choosing to make it love. I'm choosing to be like, okay, I see the sadness, but the sadness is coming from something that is not me. I'm holding on to this emotion, but it's not me. So I'm going to choose to take this emotion and make it into love. And today I'm going to operate only from love. What do I love to do? I'm going to go in the sun today. I'm going to feel the sun on my face today. I'm going to feel the grass under my feet. I'm going to go in the ocean today. Nothing else matters. I'm going to do that today because I love that. And then all of a sudden, your, your perspective completely changes. You go, what was I, what was I upset about? We all know what we love. You could ask someone, like, what do you want to do? And all of a sudden, you're like, and it's because we're taught at such a young age that there's, like, things. Like, you're a singer. You're an engineer. You're an actor. We take tests. You're in the 10th percentile. You're in the 4th don't believe leave that it's like living in the matrix unplug for the matrix for like two seconds unplug yourself and be like i know what i love because we know what the feeling of love feels like and just tap into that feeling whether it's being in the sun whether it's writing down your words whether it's singing a song whether it's it could be anything it could be being a nurse it could be helping other people it could be literally anything in the world it could be something that's not even invented yet just allow yourself to be like this feels like love I'm gonna keep going in that direction. And once you get, you give yourself the time to do that, your world, your perspective changes immediately. You, if, you, if you continue to think about the things that make you upset, you're gonna be upset forever. We have the power to control our thoughts. Regardless of what we're like, oh, but I, I have to pay bills. You don't have to pay bills. You, of course, there's repercussions that come from that, but if you allow yourself to remove yourself from thinking about paying bills and be like, today I'm just going to focus, or like right this second, I'm only going to focus on the things that make me happy, all of a sudden a path starts to appear, even if it's a tiny path. Being like, oh, wait, this, this may, I just met someone that really feels right, and this is leading me in a direction that's leading in this direction. Just give yourself the time to really just feel absolute love for yourself. So it's about learning that you have to live from a place of love and if you live from a place of love you will only experience love in your life if you live from a place of fear you're going to experience fear but as long as you are consciously aware of the fact that all you can do is be the best version of yourself so then you can be the best mirror reflection onto other people it eliminates the notion of control and then you're able to then live in a very pleasant place and all you're going to see in your day-to-day -day life is is beauty if you're living from a place of love, all you will ever see is love. Our words can be life-giving water. I found people are thirsty. They've gone through heartaches. They've been beaten down in life. We have something to offer them. Our words can help heal the hurts. Be aware of who's in your life. Be sensitive to what you're feeling down in here. Take time to let people know that you care. Our words have the power to lift people, to help them get through a challenge, to push them into their destinies. I love you.
I'm proud of you. You did great on that project. You're not just being kind. Those are healing words. Everyone needs encouragement. Everyone needs somebody that's cheering them on, somebody that sees the best, somebody that tells you you're still handsome. You can be that person for the people in your life. You can be the one they count on, the one that doesn't find fault, the one that has healing words, words that uplift, words that encourage. There are enough people saying negative, critical, judgmental words our attitude should be, who can I bless today? Who can I help heal? Who can I make feel better about themselves? For all, a lot of people don't have any problem saying negative things in front of people. Why don't you spread some good things about the people you love? Use your words to help push them into their destinies, to encourage them to pursue their dreams, to let them know that you believe in them. Many times you can see things in people that they can't see in themselves. Your blessing, your encouragement can be what causes them to step up to who they were created to be. Because we live in a society that's filled with a lot of negative chatter through the internet, social media. It's becoming normal to be disrespectful. People think nothing of being condescending saying hurtful, critical things. More than ever, people need your healing words. You have the power to put someone on their feet. You have the power to keep them from falling into depression. You have the power to cause them to pursue their dreams. But without your blessing, without your encouragement, your compliments, they won't become what they should become. Don't miss these opportunities. Don't be too caught up in your career, in your challenges. Take time to be a healer, to be a lifter. God needs you. He has no voice to encourage on this earth except your voice. He's counting on you to help heal the people in your life. Nobody is in your life by accident. Don't ignore what you feel on the inside. That compassion to encourage them, that desire to be their friend. They're thirsty. You have the water. Take time to make them feel loved. It doesn't have to be something big. Just good to see you. I believe in you. I'm praying for you. Just let them know that you care. Now look around at who's in your life. The clerk at the grocery store, the attendant at the gas station, the friend at the gym. They're not there by accident. They need what you have. They need encouragement. They need affirmation. They need to know that you believe in them. Don't keep the healing to yourself. There are people in your life right now that need your healing. They need your blessing. They need your encouragement. They're thirsty. You have life-giving water. You can be the one that helps them walk like a princess for the next 40 years. You can be the one that reminds them that they're beautiful and the chains of depression will be broken. Look around this week. Live with the attitude, who can I bless? Who can I help heal? Who can I help push into their destiny? Your destiny is connected to the people God's put in your life. If you're going to reach your full potential, this is not an option. Look around, who can you bless? Who can you help heal? Who can you show favor to? Somebody today needs your healing words. Somebody won't get past the depression without you speaking blessings over them. Somebody will give up on a dream. They'll get talked out of God's best unless you step up and encourage them. Will you be a healer? Will you use your words to lift people? Be free with your compliments. A blessing is not a blessing until it's spoken. Your thoughts don't bless anybody. You can think well of your friend all day long, but if you never tell them, they'll never know. But what I want us to see is your words have healing. When you're kind, when you're encouraging, when you don't just think something good, but you verbalize it, you're being a healer. It's amazing what one kind word can do. We don't think anything about it, 
but to the other person, it breathes life into their spirit. And when we come to the end of life, we can be known for a lot of things. We were successful in our career. Joel had a big church. She was talented. They lived in a nice place. That's all good. Nothing wrong with that. But I'd rather people say about me, Joel was a healer. He lifted me when I was down. He encouraged me when I felt stuck. He told me I could accomplish dreams that I never thought I could accomplish.